Wachovia Bank is paying $160 million dollars to settle a case involving money laundering and Colombian drug dealers. From WLRN in Miami, Rick Stone reports. Wachovia is accused of failing to set up the anti-money laundering safeguards required by the Bank Secrecy Act. Over a five-year period, prosecutors say, that allowed more than $420 billion to change hands unmonitored in transactions between Wachovia and Mexican currency exchange houses. Miami U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Sloman says some of the money helped the South American drug trade. Wachovia's blatant disregard for our banking laws gave international cocaine cartels a virtual carte blanche to finance their operations by laundering at least $110 million in drug proceeds. If Wachovia continues to comply with the Bank Secrecy Act, the federal prosecution will be dismissed a year from now. That could mean federal prosecutors consider it a crime of neglect rather than criminal intent. Edward Rodriguez is a money laundering expert at Watkins Meegan. They don't really prosecute the bank because they're such an intricate part to the community unless the bank and everyone in the bank was dirty. But prosecutors say it was a banking law violation on an historic scale, and the action is intended to signal no tolerance for money laundering through U.S. banks. Wachovia, in an email, refused to comment, but acknowledged that its compliance programs were inadequate. For NPR News, I'm Rick Stone in Miami. And you know, in this country now, there are a lot of people who want to expand the death penalty to include drug dealers. This is really stupid. Drug dealers aren't afraid to die. They're already killing each other every day on the streets by the hundreds. Drive-bys, gang shootings, they're not afraid to die. Death penalty doesn't mean anything unless you use it on people who are afraid to die. Like the bankers who launder the drug money. (laughs) The bankers who launder the drug money. Forget the dealers. You want to slow down that drug traffic, you've got to start executing a few of these fucking bankers. White, middle-class, Republican bankers. And, and I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about soft American executions like lethal injection. I'm talking about fucking crucifixion, folks. Let's bring back crucifixions, a form of capital punishment that Christians and Jews of America can really appreciate. And I'd go a little further. I'd crucify people upside down. (laughs) Like St. Peter, feet up, head down. And naked. I'd have naked, upside down crucifixions on TV once a week at halftime of the Monday night football game. (laughs) The Monday night crucifixions. You'd have people tuning in, don't even care about football. Wouldn't you like to hear Dan Deerdorf explain why the nails have to go in at a certain angle? And I'll guarantee you one thing, you start executing, you start nailing one white banker per week to a big wooden cross on national TV, you're going to see that drug traffic begin to slow down pretty fucking quick. Pretty fucking quick. You won't even be able to buy drugs in schools and prisons anymore.